Uh, hello, my name is Val, and I'm going to be briefly explaining how to use the generic mode in Blockbench to make mesh models as opposed to the cube-based models. I'll be teaching you guys how to model a face from zero to finish. I'm not going to include how to model the body in this one. It's a very similar process, um, or texturing. But if you guys want to have that covered in a future video, please comment and let us know. Um, we'll try to go over a few of the basic tools and tips to get your models looking how you want to look. Um, I do want to apologize from the start. I have never done these before, so please forgive any uh, lack of, of professionalism or um, lack of my own understanding of the other modes in Blockbench. I myself only ever use the uh, generic model format mode, so I'm not 100% versed in how some things might be uh, phrased or stated in the Minecraft modes. Um, but hopefully, everything we go over should still be pretty straightforward. Um, so let's get into it. Um, <clears throat> so first things first, um, what I've already done is I've set up a starter texture and a background for reference to my model. Um, unfortunately, I did not record that part of this, so I'll just briefly go over that right now. Um, to set up a background, it's fairly straightforward. Just in the top right corner there, you want to click on those three dots. Um, at least they're dots in the footage. This footage is a couple updates behind. I think they're lines now. Um, and just scroll down to background and then you can either load the background from a file or paste it from your clipboard and then there'll be on-screen instructions to help you like adjust and set it up as need be. For our model, we're trying to just set this up so we can essentially use meshes to trace it, um, get the proportions right. Um, so I try to set that up fairly big in a place where I can easily get the face in view and then use meshes and planes to trace it out and then fill in the gaps. So to start, we have our space here. Um, in most cases, your view is going to be, you know, 3D depth. Um, for setting up your model a lot, you're going to want to try to probably do uh, what's called orthographic view. Um, what that view does is essentially removes the perspective on the 3D space. It's a little confusing when you first look at it because you're still seeing it in 3D, but distance objects are not small like they would be in real life. They, they're at the same exact size um, no matter what distance away they are. Um, this is helpful for when you're trying to trace out your silhouette of your object. Um, you're not really focusing on the perspective, you're focusing on the outline and silhouette and the shape of what you're trying to do. So I'm starting this mesh. I'm not in orthographic mode just yet. We're just setting up by getting our planes going. Um, I usually myself start with a cube. You can technically edit the mesh in with a plane um, by going into edit, add mesh, and then pick your shape or object you want to put in. Um, but I like doing cube just because I'm lazy and I don't like <laughs> rotating it. So what I do is I just put the cube in and I would delete the uh, excess faces, leaving me with just one camera facing plane, which I can then shift around on screen to start tracing out the um, object or whatever I'm trying to make. Um, and this starts me out with a nice silhouette to begin with. Um, so what we're doing here um, to start is we are trying to um, essentially outline the face. So we're outlining the face and what we do is we will have our starting plane and we can then essentially copy that plane over and over and over again and add polygons, or I guess they're not polygons yet, they're just faces, um, to trace our starting shape. Um, to do that, the easiest way to do that is to use the edge selection tool. Um, up there in the top middle, you'll see it's the two vertical lines next to each other. Um, and then if you select an edge on a plane, and then you press Control e you will extrude that edge and essentially create another conjoined edge, which then can be edited. And you can use the uh, vertex tools and things like that to shift them around and move them around as need be. Um, You'll notice what I'm doing is I'm starting out by just tracing half of the face. Um, I do this because it's easier just to do half of it and then mirror it and stitch it back together. It saves you time and it, makes sure, and it helps you make sure that everything is symmetrical. 
Um, you can do however you want to do it. There's reasons for and against doing it this way, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I, I felt it was the easiest way to do it. Um, but you'll see as we go along, we're just still tracing up the face. Um, and we leave a gap for the nose so we can add that in through polygons. Um, for example, this is how we do it. We get the two halves. Um, you'll see that they're, they're spaced apart, but we can merge the meshes together. And then if we zoom in, we can then use the vertex tool, copy both of them, and then right click and then merge the verses together in the center. That's the important part, in the center. And you'll see that it essentially sews them back together into one singular uh, mesh, which we can then continue editing. Um, it is uh, a little tricky sometimes, depending on where they're at, to select the vertices. So <laughs> you might have to fiddle with that a little bit. But uh, yeah, you see it's not in orthographic mode yet, so the perspective is a little off. But we're starting to see it's starting to look like the head, or at least the face. Now we're going to shift the background a little bit, because now we're going to try working on the 3D depth of this face. We're rotating it to the side view, and we just go through the, the uh, background tool there to adjust the positioning so we can get that going, center up the side view reference. And we rotate our view so that we have our object facing the side. You can have the shading on or off for this part. It's not going to affect too much, but if you're really trying to focus on a lot of intricate shapes, it's better to have the shading on. Um, just to help you understand the way your, fa your angles are facing at a glance. Um, so to start, what I'm doing here is I am extruding not a, a whole um, line or an edge, but a, a single point. And that essentially just creates this invisible line that I can use to then define another polygon, another face. And you see that I can set up the nose um, right in the center through that tool. And then we're going to select the, the uh, vertices and the points here to start trying to uh, essentially fold this flat face around the shape of the skull a little bit. And you can use the edge selection tool to hold, I believe, control um, and select multiple faces at once. Not faces, sorry, multiple edges at once. Um, and then essentially create this line of selected faces. And then we can shift the whole side back or forward as need be instead of just one plane at a time. Sorry, one face at a time. It's really confusing because we're making a face out of faces right now. Now you see, this is where I'm doing the orthographic view. Um, when you do orthographic view, by default, uh, I believe it is numpad 5. It'll take your current angle and just take out the perspective. But if you use your number pad and do like 6, you'll get like a, a, a face on view, but in orthographic mode. Um, and this is useful for making sure that you, like I said, that your lines are where they need to be instead of having to worry about depth causing a distortion effect and you don't really know what you're tracing out. Um, and this will come up a little bit later here. It's all just a series of small adjustments. It's, it's not going to be a quick process, unfortunately, if you're doing something as like detailed as a face. But if you just keep playing with it, eventually you'll get it where you want to go. You also shouldn't be afraid to add faces or, or, or vertices or anything like that if you feel like it's necessary to get the shape right. Don't feel limited just because you started out with so many faces. Now, uh, and a helpful tool that I've found in my time is if you look on the bottom left of the display here where it says Harisha model, as you move points around, um, and this may be the same in other modes, so I apologize for done information, I just found it interesting. If, if you move points around, it tells you the increment you've moved it. And that's very helpful, I find, to help with mirroring. So if I know I moved the left one 0.25 units in, then I can also move the right one 0.25 units in without needing to re-mirror the image and re-mesh it together again. Yeah, it's really starting to look like the face now. Um, so our next uh, step, I believe we're doing here, is we're trying to try to get the shape of the skull. And what I'm doing is I'm 
copying a single uh, vertex, a single point, and I'm doing that extrusion where I just get that single point out. So I'm essentially just outlining, a, a literal outline of the outside of the skull. And I just keep doing that over and over and over again. And if we do that, we can then copy it over to the middle and then to the other side of the head. And then we can essentially wrap around and get this 3D shape of the head going where we can then morph it and make it more round as we go along. Um, adding more faces and planes as need be. So as you can see here, when we're setting up the side of the head, uh, it's hard to just get the meshes to create a 3D shape. It, it's very easy to just add a face in and it's just a very, almost like a, a cylinder at this point. So what you'll end up probably wanting to do is selecting your side and then splitting the mesh so that you can modify this, just the side of the head by itself. And when you do it that way, you can then squish it in so that you can add in more faces and add in some more geometry to really allow you to get that 3D depth that you need. And also, you know, model in important things like the ears. Um, so like you'll see here that I had split the mesh and then moved the one side over so that I could get the ear modeled in without having to worry about clipping and adding in like intersecting meshes and things like that. So here is a good example of where it may be helpful to use quads and tries. Um, so for the most part in block benches, there are two times types of faces or polygons you're going to be editing um, a quad and a try. And, that, and they're pretty simple to keep track of. A try just has three points um, to edit and a quad has four. Um, with a quad, it does make it easier to keep track of your editing and sometimes can be a little smoother to work with but if you're trying to really get something detailed in there um, like the side of this head and you need a lot of edit points to make sure you get the roundness right you're going to want to go with a try first and after you get it pretty okay if you want to simplify it a little bit you can then replace your tries um, double them up and then replace them with quads um, which I think I do a little bit later here now we've got the side of our head essentially built up. We can then add in the 3D depth by moving things outwards and um, curving out the edges and things like that here. And remember when you split a mesh, you want to make sure once you put it back together, you want to merge the points again so that uh, it's kind of glued back together. Otherwise, it's, you're going to try to move a, a point and you're going to only move part of the face and not the face and the cheek it's connected to. And I didn't properly merge the nose, so we gotta edit that. And add in the faces again. If you need to make sure your uh, points are properly centered, you can select the point itself and make sure that you can change the, uh, I think it's the X position to zero and that'll center it directly into the center of your little editing grid uh, at least on a horizontal axis and now that we've got the side of the head more or less built up we can now copy our head flip it and then glue it back together in the center again and uh, it almost looks like a head now just about. Just make a few more edits to make sure we get the uh, edge curve just right before you mesh it all back together in the center.
I can get the ear position lined up properly now. With mesh, it's all about small adjustments and getting things properly lined up where they need to go. Never be afraid to add more faces, uh, especially here. We need all the edge faces we can get to make this rounded out. And that just about does the head. And next we can move on to adding the uh, UV maps and texturing up the face. So it's not just this plain uh, solid object, it actually looks like a head after all that. To learn more about Blockbench, visit our YouTube channel or Go to our website, blockbench.net, or even our Discord, which is discord.gg slash blockbench.